God and the Image of God, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 to 28. Many people wonder, what kind of being is mankind? Where are we coming from and where are we going? In the end, we're all going to die, but why are we existing? Many people try so hard with their effort to be satisfied and be happy, but realistically speaking, nobody has permanent happiness and permanent satisfaction. However, why must man meet God and live their walk of faith? Why must we truly be inside the word, be inside prayer and evangelism? In order to save the field full of these people that are confused regarding these things, that don't know the answer to the life, we must have the answer of disciples. The answer of disciples is very important and the disciples that are in discipleship training must receive the strength from one source. And that strength is from knowing what their identity is. By knowing your identity, we can all overcome the things that we know that we're so confused about. We can answer many of our questions by knowing how God has created us. So we are mankind. And like I said, many people like non-believers and sometimes even believers wonder where are we coming from and where are we going? The worldly philosophers compared humans to animals and they said that uh, the main differences between, between humans and animals are that humans can speak languages, that humans can have thoughts, that humans can have emotions, and use various tools. However, this is the worldly definition of who mankind is. But as Christians, we can refer to the Bible. And the Bible tells us that God created us in His image. So in the image of God. This sign is another sign to say God. So after we know who we are, what can we know about God? We can know that there are just some things that only God has. For example, only God is omniscient, only God is almighty, and only God is all-knowing. However, what do man and God share? Man and God share what He has granted to us. Going more further into God. God is the King of Kings. What does a king do? A king is somebody who rules over. So God is a ruler and He governs everything. Secondly, he receives the glory from everything on earth. And he receives worship from man. Third, he has a relation with mankind through his word. However, mankind was created in God's image, according to the Bible. So what does it mean to be made in, made in the image of God? It means that mankind was made as spiritual beings. Some spiritual beings include angels, God, and Satan. And just like them, we were created as spiritual beings. God created spiritual beings 
to live in a specific way. God created humans to be with Him, to be in His guidance, and to receive the answers of God. In order to be with God, God gave us a special way, which was His Word, which is Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. God gives us His guidance when we live our walk of faith. We can live our walk of faith through Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And lastly, we can receive the answers through our meetings with other people. Again, through Acts chapter 1, verse 8. If we're to connect these two things that are in direct relation, we are with God through His Word. Again, the Word over here. We receive His guidance through a walk of faith when we give Him worship. And we can receive the answers through our meetings that are allowed by the King of Kings who rules over everything and governs everything. However, mankind was supposed to live in this image of God because this is just how God has created mankind. But mankind fell under a big problem when they fell into corruption. This problem comes from Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. This problem is known as the original problem or the fundamental problem. First of all, uh, these fundamental problems can be sorted into three main problems. The first one is being separated from the Word of God. Second is falling under sin, under the physical matters. And third is falling under Satan and becoming his children. However, in John chapter 1 verse 18 God gave us a solution and that solution was the word coming to us as the flesh additionally in John chapter 14 verse 6 The flesh that came to us, came to us as the way. Jesus told us, I am the way, truth, and life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. For sin, we can look at Romans 8.2, which says, For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For number three, which is Satan, in John, in 1 John, three and eight it says that jesus came to the earth to to destroy the work of the devil now these are the problems and these are the solutions the solution was first stated in genesis chapter 3 verse 15 which says the offering of, the offspring of the woman will crush the head of the enemy that's talking about the christ this stands for christ so Christ came to us to solve the problem of separation, to solve the problem of sin, to solve the problem of Satan. For separation, Christ came to us as the prophet. As the prophet, he was a way for us to meet God. He solved the problem of sin as the priest because he solved the problem of sin through Romans chapter 8, verse 2. And he freed us from Satan by crushing his head as the king. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ. So it said, The God of this age, that means Satan, Satan has blinded the minds of unbelievers to not be able to see the problem they're in the midst of and the image of God that they need to have the restoration of. 
So, speaking of that, there are only two types of people in this world from this point of view. There are people who are still stuck in this corruption, in this main fundamental original problem that don't know how to restore the image of God. And then on the other hand, there are people who have restored the image of God and are enjoying these blessings realistically. Those people are enjoying how a spiritual being must live. They're with God through the word in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, which was the solution. They received the guidance of God by living their walk of faith and giving worship to God through Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And they received realistic answers through the meetings that they have every day through Acts chapter 1, verse 8. However, when this blessing is restored, you have some characteristics of the restored man. So first off, the restored man, we can first refer to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. This is how God describes the restored man in the Bible. It says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you. In order to explain the scripture, first off, we need to realize that we are king-like beings. Now you're probably thinking, what do you mean, a king-like being? I'm not a king. But think back to this over here. The image of God. The image of God means that we are created as beings. Not God, but similar to God. And it says that God is the king of kings. He is a ruler and he governs everything. If we are like God, if we are similar to God, then that means we are similar to a king back over here. This means that no problem can be a problem for us. Think about God. Does God have any problem? Does God have anything that could become a problem for him? Just like in the same way, because he gave us the true one and only solution through Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, we don't have any problems that could become a problem. I mean, yes, you do have problems in your life. You have circumstances and hardships, but those things cannot become obstacles for you because you have the solution to those problems. Secondly, we are like priests. And this is because unlike the Old Testament, we can come before God ourselves by praying with the name of Jesus and accept him into our hearts. But as priests, we need to help other people have acceptance of Jesus who is the Christ, just like we have accepted the gospel into our lives. So like the acceptance movement. And lastly, we are the light of this world. And that is how God has called us. And this is because we are like the prophet the prophet that promotes the light. So the restored man is somebody that has restored the image of God. So somebody that has come back to all of these things, come back to the things that God has created us to live by, turns out to be like this. They enjoy the blessing of being like a king they enjoy the blessing of being like a priest, and they enjoy the blessing of being like a prophet. Now let's try to explain what happens. Like, what are the main things of somebody who is really enjoying this in their lives? So, all the information we covered so far was Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Now we're going to cover Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, God told mankind to conquer and rule all over the world. That means that God has called us as conquerors. As conquerors, it says in John 10, 
34 to 35 that we are truly the conquerors. So that's just another confirmation of Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. And it says that we have life. What does life mean? Life is the opposite of death. So we are basically free from death. It also says that we have the strength and the power of God. What does the power of God mean? It means that there is no impossibility. Nothing is impossible for us. Nothing is impossible because we have the power of God. Also, we have the wisdom of God. And we are the conquerors of all problems. This means that we have conquered diseases, we have conquered finances, we have conquered our environments and conquered all of our scars because we have the solution. Also, we have the blessing of completeness. Having the blessing of completeness means that you, ha you have peace in your heart, you have rest and you have true happiness you're not going to worry about anything because you have the peace that is given to you by God after that you become the conqueror of three things you conquer the government you conquer economics and finances of the world and then you conquer the culture Basically, all of these things, after restoring the image of God, means that we, who have restored the image of God, are conquerors, leaders, and lastly, we are guides for other people to enjoy this blessing as well. But sometimes for some people, they wonder, how come these things are not taking place in my life? How come these blessings are not realistically being enjoyed in my walk of faith, even though I'm trying to restore the image of God? And the main reason is that the word and prayer and evangelism have not been understood correctly yet. But I pray that you truly begin to understand the true image of God that He has allowed us to know and I pray that you truly restore this image of God for yourself and as a disciple you help other people enjoy and restore the image of God as well.